Hey, how about them tops, son? All day, SEC boys. SEC, they supposed to be SEC. You're listening to the Red Out Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome into a Red Out short clip here. Uh, this is from our latest episode. Hope you enjoy. As we've discussed in the past, can you be a negative fan and still be positive? This is your. This is Jake. Absolutely. Soapbox. That is my life. Yeah, <laughs> that so is my I got, life. I got a problem. Like this is how it works for me, though. Is that usually when I have the mindset like the Arkansas game. No, I'll even go back to the Missouri State game. That's like, Missouri State, you know what? We lost to them home opener last year. I think we'll get them this year. They'll have that vengeance on their mind, and they're going to come in, and they're going to play so good. I'm so optimistic about this. And then they lose really bad plays, zero defense whatsoever. But then, like, it's the Arkansas game. I'm ready for you. I'm like, man, we're going to get obliterated. This is going to suck. We're not even going to show up, and we're going to get ran out of the fade or whatever, and it'll be embarrassing. And they win. So I'm trying to get to where I just view everything negatively. That way they actually do good instead of like, oh, I believe Western's going to win. They're going to do so good, and then they suck because that's what's going to happen with me being a fan of them for some inexplicable reason. <laughs> See, my problem is not necessarily like the going between positive and negative. My problem is, and, I've had the, and I have this problem, I guess, with most like fandoms that I have, right? You don't have to click your boots together and march forward and ignore when bad things are happening. You're not th- a limbing. Yeah, I think that being overly positive in the face of overwhelming data that says, hey, maybe there's a problem, or even when something bad happens, reacting to it, being like, hey, we sucked this game, what's wrong, do better, guys, is, honestly, that's why I call it like the positivity paradox, I think when you're too positive, it almost has a negative impact on the program, because there's no accountability like is it great that some programs regardless of how crap they are sell out yeah it it is great from a monetary standpoint but that's a very few teams that can do that's a very few programs that can do that if western fans were if if nobody commented about it or the people that did comment were like ah it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine I think that accepts mediocrity I think it breeds losing mentality like you need to care enough to say to, to call people out when they need to be called out and I'm not saying you need to, like, run people down like a dog. Like, I don't think you need to be overly negative. But it, it, it this all came about, like, in the Facebook group, like, the basketball, which I know is yeah. not – I shouldn't take that seriously. But at the same no, time, everybody's yeah. like, man, everybody just needs to – can everybody stop being so negative now? We beat Arkansas. I was like, yeah, but those those things don't go away. Yeah, you can't change them and you need to move on. But, like, those losses don't go away. Your resume doesn't just restart when you get a good win. It's still valid, and it doesn't make you a bad fan to say, hey – We've got struggles, and I think there's a lot of people in fan bases that are like, no, you need to support the team and support the coach and support the program, and you need to buy your season tickets, dang it, and go, but and that's I think not, that's crap. Well, you are you can do all those things and still think negatively about certain aspects of the game, of the team. Right, the game. and you need you to comment su- on it. Like you, you need to be vocal. That's what makes fandom, and that's what builds That's what builds what kind of what we're doing, is people wanting to talk about it and caring. If everybody, like nobody listens to sports, I mean, I think some people do, yeah. but the best sports talk radio is not everything's great, go rah rah. Like even like even, shines in like even Homer stations like 93.9 or, or KSR, they still are like, hey... Like, Cal's sucking a little bit. What's going on? Like, they, they talk about the negative parts of things because it makes for dynamic... A, it makes for dynamic content, and B, it's it's how real people should think. It's how rational people you should, talk about stuff. You should question things. Yeah. Where human nature is to question. And, I mean... When you don't, you're it's, stupid. I'm not pointing anybody out, but former players are just as guilty as anybody else of saying, you know, just support them, just support them. You can support them, and say things are going not what we want to happen. Yeah. You can say a coach is not a great coach yeah. and still be like, I love my tops and I'm still going to the games, but I think we need a new direction. Like, those two things are not mutually exclusive. Yeah, it's 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 a paradox, yeah. Of course, Matt is the notorious positive p- Yeah, peach, Mr. So. Pollyanna. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I, I, just, I just said Johnny people were... Hilltopper. That's right, I just said that people that were always positive are stupid, so I called you stupid, Matt. How do you feel about that? 
He's not okay. First off, Matt is a realist. I'll give you that. Yeah, Matt's not always super positive. See, Matt is not the people that I'm talking about. I'll stay. I'll stand up for Matt because I've. I sadly I check the Facebook groups, the football, the basketball, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Matt will. He goes at it with people about stuff, and I'll give you that. I'll give you props, buddy. Uh, Got to stand up for my emu brother. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> they. You know, power to the people. People are either too negative about certain aspects or they're too positive about certain aspects and i think you need to be there's a balance you've got to have the rainbows you got to have the sunshine unless you're going to do this and then you need to just pick a position and yell about it that's right <laughs> just pick an extreme and yell there's a lot of hey, money I, to be I made mean, in that. that's right i think you gotta i think you gotta have a balance like you're saying you know you gotta you gotta be aware of reality you know you can't just be up in the clouds and saying we're awesome when, you know, we're like, you know, 2009 in football when we're 0 12. Hey, it's great. We're doing great. It's great, guys. We're going, we're going on trips. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, Hoss. <laughs> yeah, I'm to Florida Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, hey, you guys did Boca get, Raton. You got good gumbo, though, so that matters. That was one of the most yeah. greatest places in our world. <laughs> it sounds like my 1920s voice I try to yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. Back to the world. Like fair. a stereotypical, like old school boxer announcer thing. Yep. And Jared's going at him again. Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, they. Uh, I, I, you've got to be positive, but at the same, you know, if you're stalled out, you know, like our football team was this past year, you got to say it. You know, yeah, I mean, real people. You know, you know, you know, know I'm I'm all about being positive because I, you know, I, I like to point out positive things and try to be positive and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with being a little Pollyanna, but you also have to be able to back it up with some kind of substance. Like you can't just be saying it and be like, "Oh, we're going to be great," you know, rah rah. Yeah, you've got to, all right. you've got to be Polynesian. Yeah. There behind you. It's good sauce from Chick Fil A. <laughs> yes, you know? it is. Yeah, I completely agree. But I mean, you shouldn't pull punches. You know, even if you are friends with the person, you know, I think you should just you go all in. You say what you got to say. Tell the truth and let the cards fall. As far as I'm concerned, absolutely. Take no prisoners. Burn it down. Yep, Polynesian all the way. Yep. Um, Hot take, Polynesian <laughs> sauce is not the best sauce at Chick-fil-A. Close enough. Dude. You get Whatever. out of this house! <laughs> Devin, Devin would take that intravenously if he could. Oh, I am very disgusting with Polynesian sauce. I, have, I am not a, sad to admit that. My wife will gag because I'll eat it without anything. I can drink it. Oh, wow. Just the sauce. Just the sauce. If there's a little there, sauce left in that little container, like I will cheese, lap that up. Do what, man? I feel you. I feel like you on some of that. It's just not it's the like Polynesian. Cheese. The Polynesian is good, but there's <laughs> other sauces that I think are a little better. But I mean, that's just me. sorry. I'm not alone. Oh, sorry, Jared. We're losing you. I don't oh, know what's uh, happening. Hey, <laughs> no, sorry. <Yeah. laughs> nah, the sweet heat at Popeyes is god tier. That's podcast. the best. Oh my gosh, sweet heat's really good. I like anything that's like a. Um, like buffalo ranch flavor, like mix his hot sauce and ranch together. Like that's such a fat kid, like yes. Southern Kentucky thing to say, but I don't care. It's so good. Honestly, I think the best sauce at Popeyes is the mashed potatoes and gravy. Dude, it is good though. Just a dip. <laughs> it does work. It's, it's yeah. So good. See, man, I learned that from football. I was like, what am I supposed to do? I don't even. They didn't give me a utensil this time, so I figured out that I could take the tenders <laughs> and yep, dip like them the into too. that. Yeah. Were you at the game when uh, the the we ate in the same conference room after the players, and they didn't change any of the stuff? So like we had to like we had to like savage scalvage for uh, plates. Scraps. Yes, we had to find we had to find plates, silverware, water, cups, clean cups. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. We were there's like walking to all these different tables. Guys, gum just sitting there. Yeah, we're like. Oh, what that? You don't remember that? That was before you. Okay. That was an awful one. Maybe. That was with uh, Yulinov, just so you know. Oh. We did not do that again. We did not do that again. Are they keeping him on, or is he gone? I don't know. I haven't paid attention to that. I've tried to watch to see how many of the old guys get to stay, but um, I saw that D-Berry is not... He's not going to be picked back up, I think. Yeah, you're right. I I hate that for D-Berry. He's a good guy. Um, yeah, he really is. I saw Kenny's getting picked back up, though. Kenny Martin. Um, okay, good. And he did a good job, man. That D-line was legit by the end of the year. Good Lord. 
had some players. Do you, uh, who are they playing? Uh, I can I think it was LSU or South Florida, maybe. Uh, during TV timeouts, they would play rock paper scissors against the offensive line. What? <laughs> they did. Why? Legitimately. Because they're bored. Like, yeah, I mean, you you got to think if you're just sitting there waiting for a 15 second commercial because the refs won't let you go. What are you going to do? So they'd sit there and they go. I don't remember that? Do you? I don't. No, I don't remember that at all. Gosh, that's pretty good though. It it, it, it if yeah, I'm going to have to we'll have to try and get Kenny on at some point. And just talk about playing rock paper scissors. Yeah, playing rock paper scissors <laughs> and who it was against. <laughs> Him and Jamarcus Allen played rock, paper, scissors against somebody, and I can't remember who it was. That's too good, man. It was not a conference Dude. game, but... That what was, was it? It was... Uh, uh, Jamarcus had that fumble fumble return, didn't he, against... Uh, was was that one, the game, that, the first game we won? Was it Lafayette when he when he returned that uh, I fumble vaguely six? I vaguely remember that, and I think you're right. Dude, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. He was so slow. <laughs> They were just like running around him and falling and whatever. <laughs> He's about to die by the end of the field. And he only went like 50 yards. <laughs> but it took him like gas. Yes, yes. Did you were, you, were you with us when uh, we played North Texas that first year? Or was that before uh, you? Was it at North Texas? Yes. It was, was snowing. Was the old stadium or the new one? Oh, I think it was the old one. It snows in North Texas? Yeah, I don't think. I, yeah, have, I don't think I was there. See, I have a bias against Texas because of my first visit to Texas. We went, it was 30 degrees, first week of December, rain, snow the entire time. I took all of my clothes out of my bag and put them on. Because you thought, Texas, warm. Yeah, I, well, I didn't think it was going to be warm. I had pants. And but, yeah, I like packed, not, but not like, not that. Not no, 30. no, and I packed rain gear and everything. It was just a miserable game. And um, his nickname used to be Carl Winslow. Do you remember who that was, Matt? Carl <laughs> He no. looked like Carl Winslow. Ah, gosh, Mustache I'm going to have to look him up now. Um, yes, he was bald at 20, whatever, 20, 20, 20, 20 whatever. Um, I had a mustache. <laughs> had a I'm mustache. I'm trying to think who you'd be talking about. I don't gosh, know. Gosh, I'm going to have to look him up now. Was he like, was he when you first got there? Uh, I was no. was there for a couple of years. That is over here going, six, Googling Cart. Harlow, like Winslow looking as uh, something. No, that is not what I'm doing. Uh, Dude gosh. who looks like Winslow. I think that was 2008, but I don't remember. But anyway. Going on a no, so, decade ago. So, no wonder Matt doesn't remember. It's been so, 10 years. Well, we lost yeah, against dude, North I, Texas. I started 2009. That was awful. I was, there. I was in high school, man. Oh, it, it was not 2008. Or was it 2009? Lord knows, man. I know. I got, I got all this. No. Carl what was that? Like, dude, I, I think it was 2007. That. I'm trying to think who would have. I'm trying to think who would have looked like him, but I, I don't. I can't think of anybody. Come on! I still can't get over the email. Like I, I'm that when you first said that, I was like, "Where did you guys get one of those? Like, is that our secondary mascot? Because that is terrifying." The those emu in Eastern Michigan. I mean, they're emus as well. Dude, do they have a live emu? That would be they so funny. To. They need to. Those things are dangerous, man. They're violent. <laughs> Underrated predators, either. dude. Seriously, I mean, they're, they're seriously just like, like goofy looking, like velociraptors without the teeth because they still got claws. They will. Now you think being flogged by a turkey is bad? Watch, watch people get screwed up by an emu. They will, they will mess your day up, man. Oh my gosh! All right, give me something. Not as bad as an ostrich, though. I've had an emu at a um, safari park. They didn't do anything, so I mean, I feel pretty safe. You feel pretty safe. Well, they're not big. They're like three foot, four foot tall tops. Terrell they're Clark. They're aggressive, though, man. They are aggressive. They, they are went aggressive. after those things. They are violent. All right, I finally figured they're out who fellas. he was. Okay. This guy's name is Terrell Clark. He was on the 2017. He played Terrell. Terrell. <laughs> like Gerald, but with the T. With the Terrell. Yeah. <laughs> name a baby Gerald. No, 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 no. no. That's too normal. Yeah, I don't have a clue. Who so he is, his, so he was his nickname was Carl Winslow. <laughs> Uh, he was a he was like five foot five. I don't even know. I wonder if he they have it on five five two sixty. Let's see what they've got him on on the roster. He's a D he lineman. A excellent five, mustache. Excellent his, his, his home mustache. So yes, he's got a great Carl Winslow mustache. Um, he is. Um, he was like five five and like two ninety. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he was a big dude. He was a big dude. He was really short. Um, ball and ball. Yes, he basically was. So we're playing at North Texas. We get up on them at halftime. He runs a 44-yard fumble return back to it for a touchdown. 
we automatically get an unsportsmanlike penalty. Because, because you let this such dude a fat just guy. ran a fumble recovery back, so everybody gets – and um, I want to say we were up 21 nothing. That's, that's at my that favorite. point. When you let a guy who looks like Carl Winslow there, – there's a line on the rule book in the NCAA about that. Like, if you let Carl Winslow get yes, a fumble return it. touchdown, it's automatic unsportsmanlike. So, I want to say – it won't let me see the, ex, the halftime results, the, but – you it was to get game notes we, from 10 years ago. Know, right? 11 years ago. <laughs> so um, we're up 21 nothing going into half, and we are beating the dog off these guys. And we're like, dude, we're going to come out of here. We're going to be, uh, what is it, 8-6. and six. We're like, dude, this is going to be great. Come out of halftime, they score 26, 27 points, and we, well, whatever it was, we lose 27-26. Oh, God, that's awful. We lost by one point. There was a fight at the 50-yard line. Well, I don't blame the people. Was what? that when they pulled out the sledge? No, 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 no. That that's another story. That's a fun one too. Um, I know this is like this is like uh, Western stories for uh, the young ones. Um, so no, they did not pull the sledge on this one. Jared's like y'all. I was in middle school. I don't know what you're talking. about. I know, about. right? Jared's Jared was, <laughs> I was over here. sex ed. And I was, that was my freshman year of high school. <laughs> I was over here at South <laughs> Edmondson Elementary. Like I just don't know. <laughs> No, 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 Franklin Simpson. Franklin Simpson. Oh, Jared. that's right. Um, yeah, my state champion Wildcats don't hate, bro. I will, I will continue to hate because oh, your boys' basketball team upset one each other night. I was real mad. Well, why would you bet against them? It's well, they were Simpson. losing the whole game. <laughs> so, all right, so I'm sitting there on the sidelines. We just lose. They're going through and shaking hands, and we're cleaning up. So I literally turn my back to the field, and I start pouring out my water bottles. And I'm just mad. I'm like, dude, we just lost. This is bull. It's 30 degrees. Yes. It's snowing. Kevin! In and, Texas. Uh, yes, in Texas. I'm like, I just want to go home. This is bull. So nobody has walked past me. I noticed this. I turn back around. North Texas is on their 45-yard line. Western is on their 45-yard line. The coaches are in between pushing them back. And there is a screaming match going between the two different teams. And you're like, oh, I'm like, oh, this is going to be good. I'm not missing this. So, <laughs> to heck with cleaning up. Oh, at one point, somebody got a football from the North Texas side, threw it, hit Coach Wells. He starts yelling at them to keep their people under control. They start yelling back at him. I was like, we are so screwed. We are never going home. Everybody's going to get arrested. And, of course, I think like two oh, minutes well, later, everybody sure. like calmed down and left. That's usually how it goes. Was the it as sledge? bad as the Old Dominion Sideline clearing fight a couple years ago at homecoming because that was awesome. No, 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 no. It, it, no, that it was, was worse. It was worse than the old Dominion one because everybody was shaking hands. Ah, so everybody was on the field. Um, so historical fact night for everybody. Uh, Jared, since you were in high school, um, th- I was. I think I was in high school when the fight happened. With the sledge with the sledge. Western's motto for the defense was to bring your sledge. Bring your sledge. And that's what they wanted to, that was the motto of the defense. They'd pack it out, they packed it around. When Western was in the OVC, they played Western Illinois. I can't find footage of this because I've tried to find footage of this fight. Um, if it was like 07, 06. Like no, 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 no. It was pre 07, 06. Uh, yeah, then we had a I was on. never, I was on the team. It would have been point. the last year in the. You said yes. OBC? Yeah, 2006 or was Gateway. last year. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you may be right. It is Gateway. I'm it's sorry. Gateway, and then OBC was before that. Yes, you're right. It was the Gateway. Okay, mm-hmm. so 2006 was last year in the Gateway. This happened pre-Gateway, or pre-me. Uh, uh, so uh, Western's playing Western Illinois. There's Malvin going during the game, kind of like ODU, Marshall, etc. cetera. Um, and Western wins off a last-second field goal. People start mouthing, benches clear, and somebody thinks it's a great idea to go grab the sledge and start swinging it around. Oh God! Oh my God! Yes, yes. <laughs> so everybody, keep your helmets off. Yeah, duck. <laughs> so well, they used to smash the helmets in in pregame. Yeah, yes, guys are telling him. Yes, so we, we need to bring back. Either. They may do it. I actually do remember that. I actually do remember stories of that, so I'm not super (laughs) young on that. I only know about that because of these two old farts talking about it, to be honest with you. Matt doesn't remember the first helmets they used, though. You you don't remember, like, the Florida one. They did it at Florida. Uh, 
Okay, that so, was the one where it like ricocheted off the walls. Yes. <laughs> so let me finish this real quick. The I'm gateway, the gateway. Um, if you ever, from, for you old timers that watched in Western games back in the day, everybody from both teams would have to come out on the field and shake hands. Then the captains would do their coin flip, etc. Okay. That's why they did that was because of the fight between Western Kentucky and Western Illinois. We got too mad. Fun fact for you. You're too upset. Yep, people got too mad. Um, Also, the the Florida helmet thing, I think I've told it before, but I'll tell it again. Um, This was before Mark and them figured out you had to drill holes in the bottom of the helmet to loosen it. So Cody Hughes is, is the one with the sledge. He comes up, of course... For those of you who don't know Cody, he's about 5'11", 6 foot, 300 pounds, solid, like, mini mountain, okay? Like the yeah. dude that's the weightlifter of the mountain, yeah. this would be his he perfect son. warrior, man. Dude, he smacked himself in the head with his own helmet one day, because <laughs> he got mad. his own vomit one time. What? what? Yeah, okay, first <laughs> off, he yeah. He up and he was like, gotta have my energy, and then ate his vomit. Yep. Gotta have those uh, electrolytes mm. back in my yeah. system. I don't want to lose it. <laughs> This person sounds like <laughs> like the chaotic energy coming from this human. Like, wasn't his leg held together by tape his senior year? Basically, I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I don't <laughs> I mean, know that for sure. I can't all the way down his whole leg. I can neither confirm nor deny that fact. Um, yeah, it says the guy that does the taping. <laughs> yeah, the team. I didn't tape. I didn't tape knees and stuff. That was up to the uh, the certified trainers. So, but um, Cody goes. He gets ready to smack this helmet. <laughs> <laughs> and he go, he, and he goes through the windup, and he comes out and smacks the helmet. The helmet ricochets and shoots off at like thirty miles an hour towards people, and they're all like, "What the hell?" And all I can picture is is Coach Elson like ducking and like going, "What the?" And he goes, "Hit it again! Hit it again!" And we're like, "Oh my god!" Finally Seriously? busts it. Yes. Oh my gosh, dude! It looked like a truck had ran over the helmet. So it was that, so and funny. And that's how you learned you had to pre weed Yes. It. So after that game, they learned that they either they had to drill holes in a circle yeah. and then smack that, or they would take a drill or a grinder and make a circle yeah. almost so going through. through. Yeah. So it, was, it weakened it. But, oh, my God. This so makes sense. Funny. So funny. So funny. Oh, wild. my gosh. Hope you enjoyed the clip from our latest episode. Subscribe for our weekly Red Out podcast. And always remember, go Tops.